Okay, you ready? Ready. Go. Wait, wait. Well, put your feet on the pedals. I did, but then I... Okay, you ready? That's fine, that's fine. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> ready? Ay, ay, ay. Well, she's learning how to ride, what can I say? I had this funny experience recently. I went down to Boston for a regional meeting of the Society of Biblical Literature. And because it was in Boston, and because they were Bible nerds, naturally everybody there was wicked smart. Anyways, uh, a funny thing happened though, okay? A Methodist, a Catholic, and a Mormon. No, that's not the beginning of a joke. Somehow I found myself in a conversation with a Methodist, a Catholic, and a Mormon. This can only happen at the Society of Biblical Literature. Anyway, needless to say, I had a very engaging conversation. Well, here we are. It's time for another PH Doozy vlog update in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis. I'm a little nervous that someone's gonna, you know, report me to the authorities for leaving my house for a supposedly non-essential reason, because vlogging would not seem to be essential. I'm getting dirty looks from people already. It's like, oh man. I thought it was hard to get dirty looks just for vlogging in general. But vlogging during the COVID-19 crisis, whew. It's like a new level of social stigma. Anyways, of course I have an excuse because I'm walking to get my car. It's about two kilometers away, the Canadian Tire, where I had to drop it off today because I needed an oil change and I needed my muffler looked at. I got there and dropped off the car and the guy said, are you gonna wait? And I said, yeah, sh I think I'll just wait around. I said, I'll just sit in the waiting room. He said, oh, sorry, the waiting room's closed. I was like, oh, well, how long's the car gonna be? He's like, a couple of hours, but oh, you could take a walk or something. It's like a walk. I'm gonna wander around for two hours waiting for my car. Anyway, so I walked home because it occurred to me that I had also forgotten my phone. <laughs> I was missing an appendage, basically. Anyway. Woo! So a few things have happened since my last update. Number one, I passed my German exam which some people think means, thank goodness I can quit looking at German now, but not really, because now I have to supposedly read a bunch of German stuff and interact with it intelligently in my dissertation, which leads me to the second thing that happened since my last update. I finished up my dissertation proposal, sent it off to the faculty of McMaster Divinity College, and with uh, only a handful of consternating questions, I managed to get a unanimous approval from the faculty to write my dissertation. I am now officially, after all these years, finally a PhD candidate. I know what you're thinking. What have you been doing this whole time? Well, see, before I was a PhD student. Now, some people actually use this designation, ABD, for the stage of the process that I'm in, which as far as I'm concerned basically just means all but did it, because a lot of ABD people use that ABD as grounds for getting hired. And then when they start teaching, they run out of steam and they just stay ABD for years, if not forever. So I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm not calling myself ABD. I'm calling myself a PhD candidate so that I shall always remember where my current status and priorities actually lie. So now I actually just have to write a dissertation, which shouldn't be too complicated. It's only like 300 pages. Should be pretty doable. Okay, so um, there's a jar here of something really that I love that I find delicious. Okay, read that later. Cucumbers in brine. Like just say pickle. Why can't you just say pickle? Because you're Polish? It's ridiculous. Well, uh, the car's fixed for now. Woo! I got the groceries. I wonder why am I filming a vlog update while I'm running errands? Well, the thing is, it's very hard to film vlog updates at home these days because I uh, live in a two bedroom apartment and I have three children. Everyone sit on your knees. Yeah, but then I'm taller than you. I don't understand. How can you sit on your knees? I know how you can sit on my knee. But how do you sit on your knee? You that on seems your, really awkward. You on Did you brush your teeth, by the way? <laughs> no. <laughs> sit up nice and straight. I'm nice and straight. <laughs> sit up. 
sit up. Let me get your legs past my legs. Sit right there and sit up big and tall. <laughs> sit up, please. Okay, is everybody situated? Yes. Okay. In the meantime, uh, the other thing that's new since the last time I did a vlog update is that I have put into action one of the things that I merely reflected on theologically and practically in my last update, which is the thing I said about how I felt like we needed to make PhD level scholars available for the education, biblical education of our children. Of course, right now, I'm only going to be available to my children. But I discovered something. My kids have a surprising lack of, uh, of knowledge. What grade are you in? I'm not even in a grade. You're not in a grade? What are you in? Kindergarten. Not of the Bible exactly. I think their knowledge of Bible stories would be pretty, pretty typical for kids their age. Uh, and of course we have read them many Bible stories and we have, you know, done all the usual things that parents do in terms of talking about Jesus and praying with them every night and all that kind of thing. However, what I've discovered is that they lack a uh, biblical theological sensibility. Why do you always have to say big biblical the theology? Not like Bible lesson or anything that's not biblical. The I can't even say it. Um... And what I mean by that is they might know what the stories are, but when you ask them a question that requires them to think about the implication of those stories, even at the level that a child would be able to, um, they seem somehow to be woefully misinformed about the very heart of the gospel itself. Can anybody tell me what's the most important thing that Jesus said? Um, uh, that... He, we need to um, follow all his rules. <laughs> so I thought, I've got to do something. So I've started this project where I'm basically doing biblical theological education with my kids. So I'm trying to make it accessible to them, but I'm not just telling them Bible stories. I'm actually trying to help them grasp the explanatory power of those Bible stories for understanding God and the world and what he's doing and how it all fits together. Um, and so I started doing that and what I've actually done is I've started live streaming those uh, every day at four o'clock so that other people with kids can tune in because in the middle of this uh, COVID-19 crisis um, we have a lot of kids at home and of course parents are starting to look for alternative ways to sort of maintain their education and I just thought what if we also did more to maintain and in fact enhance their education uh, when it comes to biblical matters. What is your favorite Bible story? Jacob. Jacob, why? I don't know. Do you have a friend named Jacob? Yeah. Is he the child of the promise? No. No. He's not? <laughs> <laughs> no. So yeah, I've actually been live streaming those. So you can actually catch those here on the PH Doozy uh, Facebook page, which I have started. And I suppose that's the third last new thing you should know if you're watching this on the old YouTube channel. You should be aware that uh, I have also started a PH Doozy Facebook page because I've discovered that not everybody does YouTube and so I think there's some people who find it easier to connect and follow on Facebook. So there's a Facebook page, PH Doozy. You should go check that out as well. Woo! I suppose I can't really finish this video without some reflection on the current crisis. Everybody's talking about it. I think it's important to recognize that as much as we can be positive and try to look for blessings in disguise and all those kind of things, uh, we should not be afraid to accept the fact that this really is a crisis. It really is not good. And these disruptions that many of us are experiencing are not sort of minor inconveniences. They really are, in some sense, a real threat actually to our proper sense of human identity. And that's why it's so frightening, not just because we're scared we're going to catch a disease that is dangerous, but the, uh, the impacts of how we're handling it are equally traumatizing, and it's because of what I think is actually a fundamental threat that it represents to our very identity as human beings, which has always been um, constrained by our status in relationship with other human beings. And you know, they've tried to change and start calling it physical distancing because they realized that social distancing would imply a lack of relationship. And so they're, they're changing the, 
terminology, but actually the fact that we went with the term social distancing as a kind of a gut reaction to start with just goes to show you the relationship between physical proximity, physical presence, and actual relationship. The fact remains, whatever time we spend not in the presence of other human beings is time we spend being less than fully human as far as I'm concerned. But that's nothing new. This world has always been full of things that threaten to make us less than fully human. And so to me, the theologically reflective part of it is to kind of ask the question, what do we as Christians do in the midst of this particular threat to human identity? Because that is what it is. And how do we sort of allow the work of Jesus, the gospel, to inform our choices, how we respond, what we do. But I think it should cause us to reflect on questions of what it means to be human, what it is about being human that Jesus really restored when he came. And I think the longer social distancing continues, uh, the more pronounced of an issue it's gonna be, especially for the church whose entire mandate is to proclaim the redemption and restoration of true human identity. So, these are interesting times. I guess the flailing balloon man is still an essential service. Look at him. Look at him. I think for me the point is we just shouldn't act like these are simple issues or simple times. Um, I think there's a lot at stake and a lot of it has yet to even dawn on the imaginations of most of us in the church and let alone the rest of society. We're still so focused on the safety, the public health and safety aspects of this crisis that uh, there are just so many other factors we're going to have to learn to think about. I read an uh, interesting article by N.T. Wright in which he said that Christians don't have a response for this crisis and we shouldn't. And what he meant was that we shouldn't have an explanation, right? That we shouldn't do like Job's friends and say, oh, the reason this is happening is because of some sin or because it's judgment or because God is refining the church or the world or... Like we shouldn't have an explanation because there actually isn't one. And he, he pointed out that there's a whole biblical tradition of lament, which is not about explaining things at all, but actually about crying out to God why and how long. So he was calling for a recapturing of the biblical tradition of lament in uh, sort of Christian practice at this time, which I think is spot on. But it certainly isn't right to say that Christians have no response in the sense of um, we don't have an answer uh, that's relevant to the situation. I think we do. I think the gospel is precisely what the world needs during these kind of times. And so I think we got to get clear about what the gospel is and what it has to say about this situation, not in terms of its explanatory power, but in terms of the way it can awaken hope and proclaim restoration and redemption, and the way it can actually draw people into a relationship with the God who will hear our lament. So I think the church really needs to get moving on some reflective time here about uh, who we are and what it is that we have to offer the world in as far as we can't offer an explanation for what God is doing. What can we offer? Surely God is still speaking. What is he saying? And are we the ones he wants to say it through? And what's that gonna look like? So, yeah. There you go, there's some COVID-19 theological reflection. I never thought I was gonna see the day when shopping malls, which are the very temples of the religion that undergirds the fabric of our society, would actually close. Like, this is serious. I noticed they closed the churches first, interestingly enough. But at least the secular religion caught up with us. There is an H in it! Okay, uh, let's just, um... Woo! I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Oh, yes. I'm asking him to spray his hair. Woo! That pompadour could fall any minute. So hit it with the stuff that gives firm control. It's a number four. Come on, let's go. I'm starting with the man in the mirror, oh yeah.